serotonin what when you talk about it clinically people say it's like an anxiety and depression neurochemical if if you're not doing well with it so meaning it's meant to keep you happy it's a mood chemical dopamine is a pleasure and reward satisfaction chemical which is i'm striving for something and i i got that hit the satisfaction serotonin is how balanced is my mood right based on whatever's happening am i zen or am i up and down bipolar right so the mechanism is what's misunderstood it's it's believed that you just have a mood problem what you actually have is your brain can't prioritize things and that leads to the mood problem because if i'm talking to you and a dog walks behind you or there's a weird sound can i actually drown that out and focus on the task at hand or does it bug me right and that person for whom it does bug them which is me by the way leads to irritability leads to distractibility leads to what looks like adhd and it's not adhd it's not high attention deficit it's actually hyperattention i give attention to everything that i shouldn't which leads to this mood dysregulation because i'm always bothered by stuff so now if you put this in the right context of in my work i see things at a higher level of detail so i outperform when it comes to relationships and teams i've always bothered and frustrated i didn't i couldn't get it or understand what was going on now i get it right so now the relationship between the two uh serotonin is made in your gut you're making like literally 90% of it in your gut dopamine you're making about half of it in your gut so when you heal the gut you heal your brain right and this is so key and important and this is true for most chronic conditions but if your gut is not healthy if you don't eat right if you're in just in a dysbiotic state if you have leaky gut you're not the organ where you make these neurochemicals that balance your mood that make you feel better it's disrupted how are you going to make the neurochemicals right they're also made in your sleep so if you're not sleeping properly the majority of your serotonin is made in your sleep so if you don't if you're a midnight warrior or whatever and you don't sleep properly then well you're you're skipping out on the time where you actually make the chemicals you need to prepare for the next day right you also make your hormones in your sleep by the way so the guys that there's a you fall off a cliff one night of bad sleep testosterone is slash in half it's gone and that's why you're not you don't have the energy you don't have the the vigor it's so these two things are really important for neurochemicals gut and sleep yeah hearing you describe the the serotonin man and like the the hyper attention that's me man like i see everything i'm driving down the road i see every dog that's in every car i'm at the gym i see the person on the other side of the gym that is doing like a rounded back deadlift like i'll be focused on bench press and i can see their movement in the back so speaking in terms of like how you've been able to hack this like understanding you know some of your makeup like what's the ideal kind of environment for somebody that's got this dopamine reward where it's short-lived but then they also have that that counterbalance with the serotonin like what's yeah, the so ideal working environment for you that so what you just said it's amazing that you went there so fast you're intuitively nailing the thing that psychiatrists psych psychologists and everyone still doesn't understand which we took 3 years to figure out after seeing thousands of people that the key to chronic mental health conditions is context your environment that is the number one thing right why um if i'm designed to be a warrior meaning i'm designed to seek reward and do amazing things and take big risks if i don't do that i'm still wired this way and i come back to status quo so what am i going to get depressed because the whatever is status quo isn't enough stimulus it's not enough reward it's not enough pleasure the people around me are like hey this is great like no one saw it it sucks right so that's or addiction because not only does dopamine pl power pleasure or sorry reward it also powers pleasure So I have three choices to make. Where am I going to land? It's based on my context. Who am I and where am I? And if I'm in this context of being an entrepreneur, very healthy place for me to be. I can go take my risk. I can have an operations team that is the sanity check that does the work while I go do the visionary crazy cuckoo stuff because that's what my brain wants to do. Take that away from me and have go to a 9 to 5, I'll probably be either depressed or addicted. Right? So environment and context is key. the majority of addiction depression anxiety burnout procrastination all these mood issues are chronic in nature meaning they're not innate you're not born with them yes there is clinical depression yes there is clinical addiction like neurochemical imbalance uh which you probably know at a very early age already which right now medication is the best answer we have rather than other therapies and cold plunging and these types of things right but the majority of what we're dealing with when i say majority literally 90% plus you do not have to have 
It's a context problem. You are designed for this position and you are in this position, complete misalignment, and it causes you to crash and, and crash instead of thrive. Yeah. So you're describing, you know, the very successful banker guy, right? The guy that's, you know, from the time that he was in school was told like, this is the path that you need to follow. You need to get into a good university. You need to land at a prestigious firm. You need to be making six figures by the time you're in your mid to late twenties. You need to have a seven figure net worth by the time you're in your mid to late thirties. You need to build a family. You need to start focusing on legacy and just do, do, do stay within this box. And then he reaches this point where he's in his forties now. And he's looking at, yeah, I've acquired all this wealth. I built all these things yet. I'm wildly depressed. I drink myself to sleep every single night. That guy's probably got warrior genetics. He needs to be out there chasing things, building things, casting the vision and delegating some of the day-to-day -day tasks and responsibilities. Like, did I do a good job of kind of yeah, for taking sure. that and bringing it to like a real world example? That's it. Man. You, all these guys that to get to make it in that world, you have to be a shark. It's not just go get my diploma and go to town. Like you're, yeah. you're going to be junior until you play the politics and play the game and get up there. Yeah. This is why this is why there's so much suicide amongst dentists, right? Dentists have a massive suicide rate. Hmm. Why? Because nobody wakes up saying my dream is to pull teeth. <laughs> you, you you become a dentist for money and prestige and your parents force you to do it. That's why. Yeah. Probably right? come from a family of dentistry. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so if you do that and you're the reason you picked a career and you're like half of your day goes into this thing for the reason of money and prestige, you're not. And, and the person that can actually make it, get through dental school, open the practice, succeed as an entrepreneur and make it work. They are probably not wired to be an academic dentist, right? They made it happen. Once they get there, like you said, they get to the point where it's complete. Mission is over. I am now a dentist and I'm making money. Depression sets in. Addiction sets in because there's nothing to strive for. And the thing that allowed them to get there, right, the ability for them to be highly entrepreneurial, reward seeking, risk taking, they're not getting that hit anymore, which they were getting from the stress of school, the stress of building the practice, the stress of failing the first few customers, whatever. Now they're set in their ways, depression, addiction. This is why you see all these successful people that end up drinking, that end up suicidal. You see these Hollywood people, you know, that the the musician from Ellen's show, What you no coincidence that her show gets canceled and he's suicidal. Imagine the swing of the success, that feeling of I'm the top of my game. What's my next gig, right? And how hard is it going to be to get that, that crash, that big delta value between that high and the low? It's so hard to get back up until you get the next hit and he wasn't getting it. So it leads to suicide. And you see that so much among successful people.